Um, so uh, my name is Daniel Tomai. I'm an assistant professor here at uh, California State University Northridge. Um, and it's my great pleasure to interview as part of this uh, chemical research in toxicology, uh, building chemical bond series, uh, which honors great mentors in the field of chemical toxicology. Uh, today we have with us uh, Dr. Lin Lin Zhao at uh, UC Riverside and then Dr. Fred Gingrich uh, at Vanderbilt uh, University. Sure, thank you, Daniel. My name is Lin Lin Zhao and I'm a faculty member at University of California Riverside at the Department of Chemistry here. Uh, I received my PhD in bioanalytical chemistry at University of Connecticut with Jim Rusling and received the postdoctoral training with Fred at Vanderbilt. After that, I started my independent career in 2013 at Central Michigan University and relocated my lab uh, to UCR in 2019. Fantastic. Okay, so this is the one question where uh, CRT requests that you limit your response to one minute. Um, could you please tell us about your article as part of this series? Um, and, and why is this topic uh, important for uh, chemistry and toxicology? Yeah, the article discusses mitochondrial DNA damage, focusing on the uh, prevalence, the chemical nature and biological impact of the damage. Uh, I guess chemical modified DNA and uh, its biological consequence has been a, a very important area in chemical toxicology. Traditionally, the research has been focused on the nuclear DNA. However, uh, mitochondria DNA has become increasingly important in physiology, toxicology, and pathology, uh, although it's a, only a small component in quantity relative to nuclear uh, DNA. Uh, unique to mitochondria DNA uh, is that the damaged molecule can be degraded uh, in order to alleviate the deleterious consequence. And my research has been focused on the understanding the mechanism of mitochondria DNA degradation pathways. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so the next question is, um, who is the mentor to whom you dedicated your article? And why is this uh, mentor uh, notable uh, to chemistry and toxicology or other related areas? Yeah, Fred Gingrich is my postdoctoral uh, mentor and also the uh, mentor that I dedicate my article to. And Fred has made seminal contributions in cytochrome P450 metabolism, uh, xenobiotic bioactivation, and uh, the interaction of carcinogen modified DNA with DNA polymerases. I guess in addition to his scientific contribution, Fred is very well known for uh, his uh, training record as an excellent mentor and role model for his trainees. He has trained more than 20 graduate students and uh, 139 postdoctoral fellows uh, so far, which is very productive. And, and so the next question uh, is how did your mentor help you uh, navigate challenges in your career path? And also, how did they inspire you to pursue your goals? Yeah, I guess Fred uh, pr really provided me the most rigorous scientific training in nuclear acid chemistry and DNA enzymology. I learned uh, both from Fred and uh, some of the very talented people in Fred's lab. In addition, uh, I learned tremendously from some of the very closely collaborating labs of Fred such as Martin Egley's lab for X-ray crystallography and Carmelo Rizzo's lab for nuclear acid chemistry. Equally important, I guess, uh, is the training on queer development that for, uh, Fred provide, provided. And that is to say, I really learned how to become a professor from Fred. Uh, Fred helped me realize some of the very important skills to not only become a professor, but also be a successful as an independent faculty member. Some of these skills include time management, uh, scientific writing, and always being open to uh, new research areas and skills in order to solve a problem. That's awesome. Um, and and uh, if, if there's anything that you would add in terms of how uh, Fred inspired you to pursue your goals, what, what type of inspiration? Did he give you? I think, I think it's Fred's uh, enthusiasm towards science that influenced me the most. I think uh, he just have a, such a genuine love for science that constantly inspired me to 
to pursue a uh, intellectual challenging question. Yeah, uh, I think Fred really set the best example with his dedication and work ethics and uh, enthusiasm uh, for science, like I said. Uh, Fred always treat people with respect. Uh, I think all of these aspects I'm still working on to keep up with Fred's standard. Uh, for example, despite his countless professional uh, uh, obligations, Fred is always engaged very actively in all aspects of the uh, lab in different projects, which I also try to do with my lab and strike a balance between careful mentoring and uh, leaving ample room for students' creativity. Uh, Fred's careful attention to career development also heavily influenced me. Uh, for example, Fred uh, was scheduled himself in the lab meeting rotations and present uh, presentations on all aspects of career development, such as resume writing, grant writing, uh, uh, scientific uh, 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 manuscript preparation. Uh, I'm trying to do the same with my lab members also. That's great. Okay, uh, so now we'll pivot to questions uh, for the mentor, uh, for you, Dr. Gingrich. Um, and, and before I start, if, if I may, I may, uh, I also had a wonderful interaction with you, Fred, uh, at my first Toxi meeting in 2008. You probably don't remember, um, but you came to my poster and uh, and it imprint, imprinted me with with uh, with your professionalism and, and your rigor as well. So if I could just Great. preface that, uh, so thank you for that. Well, you have a job now, so I guess it worked. Yeah, thank you. I, I credit a lot of that. It, it built my confidence a lot. So. So thank you for that. Okay, uh, my name is Fred Gingrich. I'm a professor of biochemistry at uh, Vanderbilt. I hold the uh, Tadashi and Agami uh, chair in biochemistry uh, here. Uh, I don't know exactly where to start. I got a bachelor's degree at the University of Illinois. I went to uh, um, halfway through uh, college. I had an opportunity uh, one summer to work with Dr. Professor Broquist and. Um, Basically, I fell in love with biochemistry, and I've been a, I wanted nothing else to, in my life than to be a biochemist. Uh, and I went to graduate school at Vanderbilt, uh, actually with Dr. Broquist after he moved. Uh, then after I finished at Vanderbilt, I did postdoctoral work at uh, University of Michigan with uh, Professor Kuhn. Uh, both uh, Professor Broquist and Kuhn were very you know, very instrumental in my life. Uh, they, I really learned a lot from both of them and uh, they were excellent mentors. And so I've always tried to be a good mentor um, and emulate uh, them. Uh, I was hired back at Vanderbilt uh, to uh, be an assistant professor in biochemistry and I'm still here. Okay, uh, so have you developed uh, mentoring habits over your career, either purposefully or by accident that you feel has benefited your mentor? mentees and, and how? Yeah, well, I, I don't sit around and, uh, you know, come up with uh, some kind of a, you know, perfect script because everybody's different and uh, you sort of have to work with people as individuals, sort of bring out their strengths, encourage uh, them, uh, try to, you know, identify their weaknesses and, you know, how they can improve on things. Uh, you know, it's different. I, you know, some general things, I encourage people to work hard. I encourage them to uh, work on hard projects because, um, you know, the world's full of hard uh, projects. There aren't e too many easy things out there. And and uh, so you have to have the uh, stamina, uh, the perseverance uh, to attack projects that may not work right away. Uh, it's uh, very important. Uh, I work very hard on training people how to communicate both orally and uh, uh, written. Uh, those are some of the main things. People need to get along with each other uh, too. Uh, that's very important regardless of what career path you have. Uh, you're gonna have to get along and interact with uh, other people because uh, there aren't too many labs that you can just run by yourself anymore. Uh, so you're gonna have to get along with people, treat people as individuals and uh, you know, also, uh, uh, you know, you know, most people uh, wind up having families and you have to uh, uh, take care of your family uh, too and uh, somehow balance things. Uh, that's probably impossible to have a perfect balance, but, uh, you know, remember that your family is uh, very important and, you know, really more important than your career. Those are awesome words of advice. 
And, and lastly, um, how have challenges that you have helped your mentees navigate uh, change over the years? And what are some key skills uh, that future leaders in chemical toxicology uh, will need to master? Well, I think one of the things I um, emphasize is that um, uh, not everybody's going to have the same career path. And, uh, you know, Lin Lin has a job basically like mine, but uh, the majority of my people uh, don't. Uh, many people are working in industry and, uh, you know, many people are, some people are working, uh, doing a lot of teaching at small schools. And, you know, that's great. Uh, we have people who are became patent lawyers and doing things like that and uh, working, uh, you know, in administrative uh, jobs. I think uh, the important thing is that uh, people, uh, peop well, I, I try to emphasize that we're trying to teach people learn how to keep learning all their lives. So uh, be ready to adapt and uh, meet the challenges. Um, and, uh, and above all, uh, never, never lose that enthusiasm for science uh, that you first had. And because it's uh, still, that's what really makes it fun and uh, will ultimately will carry you through the tough times. And then um, some key skills that, that you think uh, future leaders in chemical toxicology will need to uh, learn and master. Uh, you know, I think if there's one thing um, we people come out of my laboratory, they usually know a lot about mass spectrometry, and I don't think the the need for that is going to change uh, too much for a while. Uh, but uh, who knows? Uh, what do I think uh, people need to do? Well, I think they need to communicate uh, well uh, with other people. Uh, you know, I think they and also I I tell people that uh, you know at least in an academic life. Uh, what uh, you know, it's not so much some people think it's all about money well it's not really about money there are two things that if you can manage these uh, you'll probably do well you have to manage time because you'll never have enough time to do everything you want to so you have to decide what has the highest priority and what you're going to do first. So you have to have be able, able to handle time, and uh, that that means being organized. The other thing you have to do is um, deal with people. So somehow you have to not only manage people, uh, but you know, in my position, you have to recruit people before you can even manage them. And uh, when you do get them, you have to manage them and uh, try to uh, you know, help them be as productive as uh, they uh, can. Um, because, um, well, you're training people, but you, know, you also have to have people uh, pulling together to uh, get uh, research done in the laboratory uh, you know, in itself, uh, aside from the training. And always, um, the other thing I try to do is, you know, try to keep people, um, you know, uh, sort of together. Uh, basically, I sort of view my lab as a bit of a fraternity and uh, people come through for a few years and then they go out and uh, sort of like to have them feel that they were part of uh, something. They met people there that are going, maybe uh, useful to uh, know in the uh, future and uh, they have kind of a common bond. Uh, that they learn certain things there. And, uh, you know, uh, that, that's what I'm really driving at, I guess. Right. So creation of kind of a lab family type atmosphere where everyone yeah, right. can work together. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's so okay. Okay. Um, so, so the last question is question for you both. Um, toxicology is an interdisciplinary science with scientists doing their work in diverse academic departments and areas of industry and government. Um, do you have any advice uh, to young scientists trying to navigate opportunities uh, for great mentorship in this uh, varied landscape? So maybe we'll start with Lin Lin. Yeah, uh, I echo many important aspects that uh, Fred has touched on. Uh, I, I think I will add one more thing is, I think networking and seeking mentors other than your formal mentors. Uh, for example, in addition to Fred and Jim Rustling, I also interact uh, extensively with uh, John Shankman uh, during my PhD and Martin Egley during my postdoc training, uh, which I benefit tremendously, uh, tremendously from these interactions. Uh, in addition, I've, all, all, uh, I've also been fortunate to interact with Lori Kaguni as an informal mentor when I become uh, an independent faculty member at uh, Michigan. Great. And then uh, Fred, do you have any advice to young scientists 
uh, navigating uh, opportunities uh, for great mentorship? Uh, well, yeah, I think uh, we've already touched on uh, some of these uh, things. One thing I should mention out, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, it's very good to learn from your mentors, uh, but uh, I think you also have to learn uh, uh, what not to do because, uh, uh, first of all, uh, you can't, uh, you know, be exactly what your mentor was uh, because, uh, uh, you know, I didn't get up every morning and I say, what would uh, Harry Broquist do or what would Judd Kuhn today do? Well, they were, in, they had different situations to deal with and times change. And, uh, you know, I'm Fred Gingrich, so I have a different set of problems to deal with. And, you know, I could see things that, uh, you know, maybe they had some weaknesses uh, too. And also, I don't expect people to go out and try to be Fred Gingrich because they, you know, if they try to do everything the way, I, you know, in their career, the way I did, it probably won't work because they'll have a different set of circumstances. So basically, you have to be yourself and uh, you have to learn um, what are some of the good things you should be doing. And then, you know, some of the pitfalls and the um, problems uh, to avoid uh, along the way uh, too, regardless of what you do. Um, in general, in toxicology, toxicology is hard. Uh, and um, basically, uh, you know, the question of, you know, why things get sick and why things get die, die it's, it's tough. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes I'm amazed about how, how little we actually know uh, in the details of some of these things. So anytime you can make any progress, real progress in the field of toxicology, it's important because, um, you know, these questions are very important. I, you know, I see these all the time in practical applications with, with drugs, with chemicals in the environment, with people's health, everything. These are uh, really, uh, you know, big time situations. And, you know, there's also, you know, a lot of, you know, economic uh, consequences uh, too in terms of what we uh, do and the decisions we make and the recommendations we make. <laughs>